Hey you guys, I'm Tracy with New Ball Python Keepers. Today I'm going to show you how to use a plastic storage tote as a hatchling or juvenile ball python enclosure. First we need to get some supplies together because we need to do some modifications to the lid. All right, let's get started. So this one I picked up at Target today. As you can see, it has six latches, which helps make sure that the snake is secure. This one is by Easy. It's 34 quarts and the dimensions are 22.7 by 15 by eight and a half, which is a pretty decent size for a hatchling or juvenile ball python. First things first, we're going to need to set it up and plan to cut a hole in the lid here so that we can attach the mesh panel. I'll go ahead and get that set up. First, let's walk through the supplies that you'll need. I wanted to show you, this is the lamp that I'm gonna be using. And it's a 5.5 inch reflector dome and it's got a ceramic socket inside. Uh, it's important to know this so you can order the right size screen that you'll be installing into the lid. This is the screen and this is seven inches. When I put the lamp on top of it, you can see it gives nice clearance all the way around the lamp. I have this plate here in order to draw a circle on top of the lid so I know where to melt the hole. This is a soldering iron. These are about $10 on Amazon or at Home Depot or other home improvement stores. The Sharpie for me to draw the hole. This is a razor blade and I'm gonna use this to cut off the excess um, plastic after it's melted just so it leaves a nice smooth edge so your snake won't rub his nose on anything um, rough around the edges. And a handful of very small zip ties. These will go through the holes on the pizza screen. All right, let's get things set up. Okay, before I do anything else, I wanna figure out where I wanna put this hole. So, Generally speaking, the lamp is going to hang over the warmer side of the enclosure, so I'm going to want to put it kind of towards this side, but I don't want it to be all the way on the edge, so I'm probably going to center it about here. So that means I should take my plate. This is the right size that'll show about how big the hole should be. You can find something similar at your house after you order your screen. By the way, if you use an 8.5 inch reflector dome, you probably wanna get a nine or 10 inch pizza screen. Okay, so I'll get this set up, get out my Sharpie, get it nice and centered, and then I will draw this circle all the way around. So I know where to melt using my soldering iron. Okay, so now we have our hole. I'm gonna get the soldering iron set up and heat it up. For this step of the process, I am setting this up in my kitchen because the plastic does off gas some fumes and I wanna make sure that's nowhere near any of my animals. Okay. So you start off with this, let's just insert it here and it'll melt really quickly. And then just apply some gentle pressure all the way around the circle. This process takes quite a while, so I'm probably gonna end up speeding up the end bits of it. I'll just keep working on this until I get all the way around the circle. Here I've made it about halfway. It takes a long time. Getting really close to the end now. Just the last little bits. I'm 
This is a lot more boring than watching paint dry even, I've gotta say. This particular lid has some plastic um, rigidity spines or structures underneath it just to keep it a lot more stable so it takes a little bit to melt through those. Almost there. Three millimeters left. All right. Now I'm gonna check it over and see if I can pop it out. All right, we have our perfect hole. And next we need to get the razor blade and trim off all that extra plastic that is leaving it rough. All right, we have a nice clean hole. The next thing we're gonna need to do is take this screen and we're gonna set it on here. And what I need to do is pop some holes around the circumference of this so that I can feed the zip tie down into one and up into the other. So I have my warm soldering iron and I'm just gonna go through and do this. Strategically gonna try and find the best places to put those holes so I don't run into A lot of these little spines on the underside. I need to just make it big enough that, that zip tie will fit. It's really ideal if you have a flat lid, but we don't always have that option. So we're gonna do the best we can with the fact that this is not a flat lid underneath. We don't need 9,000 of these holes, but just enough that this thing isn't gonna come off and there doesn't leave a gap anywhere that the snake could work his way out. That open. One more over here. So I'm kind of even on both sides. All right. All right, I'm gonna clean up the edges so that I don't have any loose plastic on the underside that's scratchy. Ready for the next step. I'll just show you how I do this. So take the zip tie. You're gonna want the little doodads to come and sit on the top. So feed them through like this. Cinch it down on the top. I'm gonna do one on the other side just for balance and to secure this on here where I want it. Probably here. This part is a little bit. Funny. I'm going to do the same all the way around the circle. Okay, these are all secured. Now I just need to come in and snip off all of the long ends.
right, that's pretty tidy. Now we've got, now can you guys see that? You can see the entire thing is secured. So this is the main body of the enclosure. We're gonna need some sort of ventilation holes and we need to melt um, an insertion point for the thermostat probe so you can make sure that the overhead lamp doesn't overheat. So my preference is to take and put the thermostat probe right down about here. That'll come out right around where the substrate is. So it'll pop up and then you can secure it to something inside. And I need to make it decently big, not too big, but big enough that that probe tip is gonna fit through that hole. Sometimes they have a suction cup on them. And the best thing to do is just um, put a little Vaseline on the tip and pull off the suction cup, stick it through and then reinsert it. The next thing we wanna do, um, okay, you just melted a huge hole in the roof. So it's not like this tub doesn't have any ventilation, but you probably want a little bit of ventilation on the sides. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a couple of holes on the sides just so I've got some level of additional ventilation. And I just kind of swirl it in a circle so I keep them pretty even and smooth. When I'm finished with this process, I'll go back behind again with the razor blade and cut off any excess on the inside so the snake doesn't rub its snoot all along that edge. If they can find something to get into, they will. All right, so I did four over there. I'll do four on this side. And you can add more of these if you find that you need it. If you add substrate and you find that there's condensation going on, you may choose to add additional ventilation holes to allow that some of that moisture to escape. You can always cover them up with some clear packing tape from the outside if you find that you have too many and you aren't able to keep your humidity in like you had expected. All right, so now I have four on each of these two sides here. I could put it all the way around the perimeter and I'll probably pop a few more in, but just for an example, that's what that looks like. All right, let's get started with setup. Let's go through all the supplies that we'll need first. I went ahead and put some coconut husk chip substrate in the tub here and have just been letting it air a little bit. Tubs hold humidity really well, so I wanted to make sure it wasn't too damp. We have the probe to the thermostat that I'm gonna show you how and where to put that. Um, a number of different artificial plants um, that I'm gonna use and kind of place around here, just a few selections. I have a digital thermometer hygrometer that I'm gonna put on the warm side. You can put one on both sides, but for the purposes of this video, I'm just going to show you um, placement for the warm side. I have some rocks over here that I have scrubbed clean and soaked in chlorhexidine. These um, are where I will put outside of the hide just for a feeding area to keep substrate away from the rodent. Two little coconut hides, a little water dish, some Brita filtered water, and a piece of cork bark. Okay, first let's get the thermostat probe placed appropriately. I had to take this little suction cup off first with some Vaseline and insert it through the little hole that I melted down here and then put the uh, suction cup back on. Now we just wanna place it. So basically the most appropriate place is right around here. This is gonna be the warm side of the enclosure and the lamp is gonna hang over here. We may wanna make sure that this probe is unobstructed. So the rays coming down here will be able to be accessible by this so it can be measuring the temperature. All right, now let's place some hides. And these little coconut hides and I wanna put one kinda off in a corner over here and Let's see, the other one can go kind of opposite it at the other corner. Um, next, let's do the water. All right, 
I kind of like the water in the middle. And then we have all these little rocks. So let's put the rocks out. I will probably have like a separate little feeding area over here. Two more rocks. All right, actually I, I wanna put this one right in front of the hide. Sometimes they like to come out and lay their face on it. So we'll leave that over there. Um, cork bark, let's figure out where's a good place for the cork bark. This might be a little basky spot so we can kind of make the hide so he can get in over here. He's really little, but he might like to come and hang out underneath the lamp right here on top of the high of the cork bark. Let's see what else I have. I have a little orchid I could probably put over in the corner. I want to make sure that I put my thermometer close to where that uh, probe is. So I'm gonna just set it down right next to it and then I can get in there and read it. If you use the ones from Govi, you can just read the data from your phone because there's a phone app that you can connect to. I've got a couple of other little um, pieces of foliage that we can kind of set here. I like to obscure the entrance a little so that they feel like they're hidden and have you know, something to protect them. And let's see, I could probably, mm, I think I'm not gonna do the blue one. I think I'm gonna do a bit of cherry blossom in here like this. I don't want it to really obscure the little hide entrance too much so he can get in. All right. I think that's about it. Then we would just put on the lid and hang the lamp over the top, over this warm side. I like to use a reptile lamp stand just so that you can swing the arm to the side and take the lid on and off. And there you have it. This is the finished product. A nice little hatchling or juvenile storage tote setup with lamp. Thanks for watching.